Hello and welcome to the Frontington and Backwards Railway. A few episodes ago I tried to make a platform, and by the end concluded that it was a failure. But I'm no quitter, so here's one last ditch attempt to rescue the project. Back in episode 9, I started building this platform. It's on a gentle curve, so I needed a completely custom shape. I made the walls out of extruded polystyrene, with a hand-carved stone texture, put a few supports inside, covered the top with card, and glued individual paving slabs onto the edges. The result was less than satisfactory. There's a link to that video somewhere on your screen. Or in the description below. Maybe. Anyway, after a bit of thought and reflection, I decided I'd have one last attempt. The parts I was least happy about were the edges and the card surface, so I needed to start by undoing that. An unfortunate side effect of time travel using a DC controller is that my camera wouldn't record video for a while afterwards. Something to do with protecting the space-time continuum or something? I didn't read the manual that closely, to be honest. Anyway, what happened next was that I covered the top with some aluminium tape. There were three reasons for this. Firstly, I had some. Secondly, I figured it would be easy to trim to the right shape. And thirdly, it's non-porous, which means it shouldn't soak up the glue and warp like the card. It does also mean that the glue is less likely to stick to it, but I'm not exactly going to be chucking it around a football field, so it doesn't need to be super durable. He says, confidently. With that in place, those walls need to be less blue. So I cooked up some soup. The ingredients for this recipe are some PVA glue, some black acrylic paint, and just a dash of water. Tasty. The exact ratios are somewhat approximate, so I just had to taste and see how it came out. Essentially, I want enough PVA to form a protective layer, enough black paint to hide the blue of the polystyrene, and enough water to help it cover nicely. If the mixture wasn't right, I added a bit more of whatever it was missing. Not exactly scientific, but it worked. Next, I wanted to make another attempt at the edging. Previously, I had cut individual slabs out of plasticard, but neglected to measure them accurately, so they looked a mess. This time, I'm keeping them in strips to ensure they line up nicely, and scoring lines where the individual slabs would be. The first few of these edging pieces I glued onto the platform using PVA, because, well, that's what I use for pretty much everything. But with the layout being in my garage, and winter being upon us, it was taking an age to dry. So the later ones I switched to using superglue. 
In both cases, though, weighing them down was useful in keeping them flat and lined up properly. Now it's time to fill in the middle. A layer of neat PVA went down first, and on top of that I poured some sand. Nothing special here, just some kids' sandpit sand, nice and fine. And once painted, this should look like scale gravel. There were a few patches that needed some further work, either because I hoovered it up before it had completely dried, or because I'd missed spots entirely. But I was happy with it in the end. The first layer isn't anywhere near thick enough, so once the first layer was dry I needed to add more. It's a bit like ballasting, only with sand. Incidentally, rather than using a syringe like normal people, I use an old PVA glue bottle, as it's a convenient size and has an easy to control nozzle. So in goes some glue, and some water, give it a good shake, and we're good to go. Technically I could have added some washing up liquid to break down the surface tension, but I decided I didn't need that here. Or I forgot. One of the two. I tried a few different techniques in the end, uh, sometimes putting the glue on first and then pouring the sand over the top, and sometimes putting the sand on first and then pouring the glue over it. It was a bit messy, but I got it up to the right level eventually. Oh, and I also pressed my booking hall into the sand while it was drying, so that I knew where that was going to go later. So next came the painting. I mixed up some more of that soup I made earlier, only this time adding in some white, ending up with this lovely grey mix. For the edging slabs, I used a mix of acrylic paint. I had some black, some white, and some brown, and just mixed it together in varying combinations. 
There's no science to this, exactly. I just painted a few tiles at a time, and then mixed a slightly different shade and did some more. The end result is an organic looking collection of edging slabs. I think it's pretty convincing. The final step was adding a little more texture to the walls. The black undercoat does a good job of hiding the blue polystyrene, but it's a bit flat on its own. So first comes some white acrylic paint, dry brushing it to pick out the highlights. And once that's done, it's time for some brownie black. Again, dry brushing over the top. It may seem odd to paint it black and then white and then black again, but the combination really does matter. The dry brushed black doesn't cover all of the white, and dabbing it unevenly gives this wonderful aged feel. And that's about it. And standing back and admiring it, I'm really pleased how well it's come out. I mean, it, it still needs some people and some benches and other assorted ornamentation, but that'll come in time. For now, I'm just satisfied that this project has been rescued. I feel like quite the hero. As always, do leave your thoughts in the comments below. It's such a joy to find out what you think, or what you'd have done differently, or how you've approached a similar challenge, you know, that, that sort of thing. And there's still plenty to do on this layout, so keep your eyes peeled for future videos. Better still, hit that subscribe button. That's all for this video though, so bye for now.